Hi, this is Trey Pass. I'm doing another Mr. Nightmare reaction to another Mr. Nightmare story. And this is three chilling true Blizzard horror stories. I'll get anxious to get to this, so I'll be right okay, back. Okay, let me put my headphones in. Okay, here we go right now. Go. Three chilling Blizzard horror stories. Story one. My friend Carlos and I would always go out shoveling people's sidewalks after big snowstorms to make some quick cash. That makes sense. In like 2013 or 2014, our town was in the midst of a blizzard. It was dark, windy, and snow was building up fast. Our school already announced it would be closed due to snow the next day. Snow day. So with nothing to do that night, and it being only like 8 p.m., we went out with our shovels and started ringing doorbells, offering to shovel sidewalks for cash. We got a lot of no's before we got our first yes. Okay. We made around $15 each on our first house. We made our way across the neighborhood. A lot of people weren't interested, and most people just wouldn't open their doors. We got a second house eventually, and made a little more money on that one. Then I remember a long gap between that house and the next house that would say yes. It was a small corner house, but usually corner houses would pay more. We rang the bell, and the door cracked open, but whoever was on the other side didn't show their face. They did, however, speak from the other side. A deep man's voice said, who's there? I pitched our snow shoveling service to the man on the other side, requesting $40 in return since it was a corner house. <laughs> there was a short silence. Then the voice on the other side said, oh yes, yes, please, $40 is fine. <laughs> there was a hint of nervousness in the voice. I said, all right, and then the door shut. I didn't see the man's face at all. I turned to Carlos and said, that was weird, but we started the shoveling. I started from the front porch down the walkway to the driveway. Carlos worked on the sidewalks. I couldn't help but stare at the house every once in a while, and at one point when I turned to a window as I was throwing the snow from my shovel onto the ground, I saw who I assumed to be the homeowner. He was standing at one of the windows watching me. Oh. Could I see anything of his face? Not really. He was standing in a dark room. A little uncomfortable it made me, but I tried my best to ignore it and continue <laughs> shoveling. Of course, I'd occasionally glance back and he would still be there. Eventually I finished the driveway, just around the same time Carlos finished the sidewalks. So we started our way back up the walkway to the front stoop, but before getting to the stoop, the door opened and the man inside shouted, go around back. Carlos and I froze, looked at each other, then obeyed his command. We stepped through the snow-covered grass to the backyard gate. I opened it and pushed it through the rising snow, which was slightly difficult. Then, there we were, in the man's backyard, which had a small awning that we stayed under to get out from the falling snow. Okay. We waited by the back door, expecting him to come outside eventually with our money. We waited for over a minute and started getting antsy. I started pounding on the back door since there didn't seem to be a doorbell. Okay. Then there was the sound of a window being rotated open, followed by the man's voice again, saying, Come inside. Ah, uh, no thank you. Carlos and I looked at each other again, and then I led the way in through the back door. All the lights in this house were turned off. It was actually so hard to see anything, really. <laughs> Hello? I said. I heard a man's voice from another room call, I'm counting your money on the table. It seemed he was inside the kitchen, which was connected by a small door through the room we entered from. We walked closer to the kitchen, which appeared to be lit up through the window only by the street light standing on the side of the house. I stood at the doorway, intending on looking through the crack of the door to see where the guy was standing in the kitchen, okay. but I couldn't see through the crack because it was blocked no. by him. Oh. Oh. The man was standing on the other side of the door, looking through the crack. Jesus. I turned and pretended I didn't see him. I made up some bowl, like telling Carlos we forgot something outside. <laughs> We left the house, and the man didn't say a word. Jesus. As soon as we got outside, we grabbed our shovels and sprinted away from there. All of our hard work shoveling that house was for nothing. We got back to my backyard, put the shovels away, and went inside to warm up and rest for a little bit. <laughs> Carlos and I chilled for a little bit, then it was time for him to go. He went out the back to get his shovel, but he came back inside, concerned, oh, boy. telling me to come take a look at something. Oh, boy. There was an extra, fresh set of boot marks in the snow. Ugh. You may ask how we knew. That's because one set trailed from the gate to the back door, 
to the shed in the corner of our backyard. Carlos hurried back inside and we told my mom. We live in a very poor, relatively unsafe neighborhood, so my mom was quick to believe us and get 911 on the phone. Police showed up relatively quickly considering the horrible driving conditions, and they went to investigate the shed. Carlos, my mom, and I watched through the back window as the police pulled out a man from the shed. Ugh. He had a matching shirt from what I could see through the window back when we were shoveling that property. Jeez. It was undoubtedly the house owner. Jeez. He later admitted to police that he was going to attempt to break into the house when we all went to sleep. Jesus. Why, however, he never answered. Police also said he was very intoxicated when he admitted this, which made me think, what on earth was he going to do to us in that kitchen exactly. if we didn't leave his house? Exactly. Shoot. Lucky. Story number two. Story two. It was an early December night, and we were having our first okay. snowstorm of the year. I was in my bed watching some low-budget Christmas film while texting various friends. Mostly my friends George and Pat. We used to text in a three-person group chat. Everything was as it should be when... I felt my heart drop to my stomach as a bang came from the window right next to my bed. I opened the curtain, but there was no one standing out there. Then, pow, there was another, as I was oh, still boy. looking out the window. It was a snowball. Someone was throwing snowballs at my window. I stood on my bed to get the best okay. possible view out the window, but I didn't see anyone standing out there in the snow. So I actually lifted open my window to call out. It was almost immediately after I shouted out the window that I heard someone's laughter. <laughs> Not a child's laughter like yeah. I was expecting it to be. It was a deeper voice, could belong to anyone from the age of 17 Jesus. to 40 for all I knew. I shut the window and started texting in our little group chat saying I knew it was okay. one of them messing with me. The fact that they now weren't responding made me even more confident. I didn't close the curtain as I knew whichever one of them it was, they weren't done messing with me. And just like that, another snowball hit my window. I lifted the window up quickly to try and catch them. And there he was, standing in the snow, waving to me. But it wasn't Ugh. either of my friends. It was some guy in a black beanie and black Jesus. coat with gloves on, laughing. I started Ugh. approaching the window. I hurried and slammed it shut Jesus. and twisted the little lock. I also closed the curtain so that he couldn't look into my room. Both of my friends had texted back by now with Get question a weapon. mark responses. Then, there was a single knock at my window and it started being filled weapon. with and shaken. He was trying to lift it open. When it all stopped, I waited a couple minutes before peeking through the curtain. It seemed the coast was clear, so I finally went to go tell my mom and dad about the whole thing, who came to have a look out my window. Sure, my dad believed me, he literally saw yeah. the footprints in the snow, but he just didn't see it necessary to call <sighs> the police, figuring whoever was oh. out there gave up. My dad turned on all the outside lights just as a deterrent, and then they went to sleep. I stayed up in my room with the <coughs> lights off, continuing to watch movies. Ah. The door clicked open. I said get out, assuming it was my little brother. The door shut, so it okay. seemed he listened to me. Silence, except for the TV. I watched for a long while, then a click in my wood floor. I turned, halfway through repeating get out in a louder voice, when realizing it was not my short little brother. It was oh, a tall man in the black beard. Jesus Christ! Outside. He started waving oh. to me again at the doorway, then put his pointer finger up to his lips. He started walking over to my bed, and that's when I got up, oh. ready to defend myself. He approached faster now, easily grabbed oh. me, and covered my Jesus. mouth with his leather gloves. There was a wet white towel in his glove that he was pressing to my face for a long time. I tried to break free and scream, uh, but I couldn't. And that was the last thing I remember Jesus. before everything went black. I woke up in my living room with my parents Jesus. and police hovering over me. An ambulance arrived shortly. My dad heard the commotion going on in my room and came to find the man over me. My dad, Good. much larger than that man, Good. managed to overpower him. But not long enough before the police could arrive, he ran out the front door Jeez. and disappeared. I was quickly brought to the hospital. Thankfully, I was all right. 
if you're wondering. The man climbed in Jesus. through a downstairs window. Oh my god, story number three. It's a little known common courtesy out in the mountains during a snowstorm that if someone's seeking shelter in your cabin, you let them in. No, I wasn't the one offering that courtesy to someone else in the story. I was the one seeking refuge. It was supposed to be a long weekend of hunting, but what started as a cold sunny day quickly formed tons of dark storm clouds, and I quickly found myself right in the middle of a blizzard. After a full, rather unsuccessful day of hunting hares, I was way too far and disoriented to make my way back to my cabin. I had to seek refuge somewhere else. I came across a log cabin nestled between a circle of trees. No lights on, but I still had to try the door. I hit the door with my fist a few times. No answer. But I could hear footsteps on the other side, approaching the door. I expected it to open, but it didn't. I shouted that I'm lost and need shelter. The door cracked open, and I heard a voice say, Come in, leave Ugh. the boots by the door. I waited a bit, expecting him to open the door fully and formally greet yeah. me as anyone would. But that didn't happen. So I pushed the door open myself and entered the dark cabin. The room was lit by two candles, just enough for me to see the couch that the man then told me to sleep on. As for the man, all I saw was his silhouette on the far side of the room. The little light from the candles didn't extend that far. I dropped my bag and gun on the floor and laid down on the couch. I thanked the man for letting me crash here till the storm blows over. He didn't answer. His behavior wasn't the most bizarre thing. Folks are strange up in the mountains. If he wasn't up for conversation, I'd just get some early shut-eye. I closed my eyes, though the level of darkness with my eyes closed wasn't much of a difference. I was subconsciously waiting to hear the man's okay. footsteps leave the room, but they never did. I opened my eyes, and his silhouette was still in the corner of the room, just standing there. I felt the need to say, yeah, I think I'm just going to get some sleep now, thanks. No response. I turned to my other side so that I wouldn't be tempted to just keep opening my eyes to check on him. Some time passed, but without having heard his footsteps walk away, the curiosity was eating away at me. I turned over to look again, and this time, I swear to God, the silhouette ah. of the man was closer by at least a few feet. I couldn't make out his face, but the slight glow from the candles would just barely trickle around the man's forehead. And what I saw was disgustingly pale skin. I quickly gathered my belongings and thanked him, but I said I had to go. I didn't look at him anymore, because I don't think <laughs> I wanted to know what he looked like. I put my boots on outside and hurried back into the blizzard. I came across another cabin down the hill, this one with the lights on. I knocked on the door, and some old man and his wife answered the door. They welcomed me in immediately okay. and were very inviting. They gave me some hot tea and offered uh -huh. me a spot on the couch. I told them my story about the freaky cabin up the hill, and the two looked at each other, puzzled. The woman confirmed two times the cabin I was talking about. Then she said, Honey, the owner of that cabin ah. was murdered two years ago. That cabin Jesus. has been vacant ever since. Okay, that's enough freaky stuff for me. That was a ghost, maybe? Who knows? Freaky enough. Okay. Oh my god. Some people just, you know, you're nuts anyway to go up there by yourself. Uh. Whew. Uh. Okay. Now, those are uh, stories. <laughs> the second one, without a doubt, is the topper. The guy actually was throwing snowballs at your house. He wanted you bad because he's throwing snowballs at your house and tried to break in through the window. And then you parents to call the cops because that guy just probably hung around. He waited and hung around. And if you'd have called the cops, maybe he'd have ran. The parents to call the cops instead of just, just dismissing it because that was, that was crazy, man. That was, that was nuts. And the, the guy actually broke into your house and standing there and he actually chloroformed you. Lucky your father heard the commotion and came in because that could have ended tragically, very tragically. Somebody else could have been telling that story about you. Maybe your little brother would have been telling that story about you being kidnapped and murdered and found later. 
that is freaky. And then the story about the guys, the two guys shoveling, and then the guy followed them back to the house <laughs> and said he's going to try to break into the house and do who God knows what with you. Yeah, I should have never dropped your shovels. You brought, I'd have brought the shovels into the house with me, especially the guy who wasn't showing you his face. There's probably a reason for that. If you don't want to determine to get that money, I'd have brought them shovels into my house so we can use those, me and my friend, we'd have used those shovels as weapons. And that dude would have tried something. We'd have beat him down with them shovels. Okay. But that that was freaky too. But in the last story, that sounded like a ghost thing, maybe like a ghost story or something. <laughs> but, uh, that second story, that hands down is the absolute worst. That was just insane that the guy was throwing snowballs at your house and you thought it was your friend. It was actually a grown man and smiling and waving. And then he tried to break into the house and and then later he, he go to sleep and he's in your house. Oh my God. And he basically chloroformed you and it could have ended real bad. Thank God your father woke up and managed to overpower the guy and, and, and save you. But oh my God, that could have ended really bad. Woo, that was those were three freaky snowstorm stories. Anyway, let me know what you think of this, these stories from Mr. Nightmare. I'll leave a link to Mr. Nightmare's channel in the description box so you can check it out for yourself. Also, I have links to my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram in the description box. Also, I have a link to my other channel for his views and opinions. Please check that out as well. And this is Trey Pastor saying so long and take care.